Show.com. Uh, watch live there if you like. Thank you so much to our assistant in back in the video department today, Dildy Slumberdunk. It's, uh, I, I think this is a return to greatness uh, for uh, Mr. or Mrs. Slumberdunk. Mrs. Mrs. Dildy, of course. Mm-hmm. It's short for uh, Dildegard. Uh, Dildy Slumberdunk. Thank you so much for assisting us today. Your Cleveland Guardians are on a tear, boy. They are uh, have won five straight. They're going for their second sweep. They swept the Twins over the weekend, and they're hoping to sweep the Angels today. Angels are ahead by a run. It's top of the fifth, 2-1 to one right now, uh, happening right around the corner uh, at Progressive Field. You know, I haven't gotten to a night game in a while, and I got home last night, and it occurred to me that there was something I, I There was a piece of production that I had to do, and I hadn't done it. So I get my daughter to bed, and I come back into work. And coming back downtown when Progressive Field is all lit up and it's pitch black. I mean, there's no, the sun is way down by now. And uh, it's a wild scene. Great. Very exciting. Beautiful. Love night games. Uh, but afternooners uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, next night game is going to be when the Twins come into town this Friday. That's a 7-10 start uh, here on MMS. White Sox are in town tomorrow for what I assume is a makeup game. Yeah, this is for that one that got rained out a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Maybe I'll stick, stick my head in there or something. I, I That one slipped completely past me. Uh, it's a 110 start tomorrow. A one-off uh, against the Chicago White Sox. Make myself a note. Let's see, a 110 start. We're on the air at 2. How many minutes? Let me, let me do the, some work on this. It's you got everything to ready out. to go. So if you got everything ready to go, you could probably oh stay God. there till about one thirty. Get over there. Let's see an inning. Let's see. So because you figure they're going to start it, let me do some okay. calculations on this here. So they're going to start at one ten. We're on at two o'clock. How many minutes between one ten and two? So that's two really hours. difficult to carry the. Are you traveling One. at the speed of light during any of this? No, I might okay, scooter that, over. Time, time Let me see. goes slower in that case. Yeah. Moon minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was explaining that to my daughter the other day, and she was blown away by light speed travel and how it sure goes and how time is relative. Well, that's why time travel, uh, depending on who you talk to, some people say that it's theoretically possible, and other people say that it is practically impossible. So who knows? Well, if you're traveling, I mean, you could travel into the future if you can travel at the speed of light. Mm-hmm. We're just nowhere near getting to a place where we can travel at the speed of light. Right. Your body would, like, break or something. Closest we come to time travel is when we see the stars at night, mm-hmm. right? We're watching things from billions of years ago. We're watching the products of the past. That's also, the most exciting thing. Uh, we also have time travel when we move the clocks for when we black out. But I think that's <laughs> or when people black out. Yep, Mary uh, used to black out a lot. She would time travel. And then leap day. That's kind of time travel. Is it next year a leap year or was that this year? I think it's next year. Next year. I don't is think a, it was this year. Is a maybe, leap? No, it might be 2 years away. I thought it was 2020 cuz it was like Oh, really? I thought so we, it, might, just, it I might be 2024. Just, okay. I don't know. Yeah. It's not 2023. Ugh. I think the next one's 2024. 2024 is going to be your leap year. So if uh, your birthday was February 29th, and you get so screwed with that anyway because you always have to have another, you have to designate another day as your birthday. Next leap year is the 20, uh, 2024. Are you choosing February 28th or March 1st? Or are you just picking a random day? You could be like, my birthday's November 8th, but I was uh, well, actually born on That's my mother's year. birthday. Okay. I think you would want it to be near, like within Why? spin range. Well, matter. because it's within spin range of when you were actually born. So? Uh, I you, guess don't, it, you don't actually have a birthday, so pick. But then day Mary, you want. that's going to throw off the zodiac, and <laughs> those are I accurate. I don't believe in it like that. You always try to get me. On I'm not zodiac trying to. Stuff. I'm not. I'm not getting you on that. I'm just saying. In general, there are people yes. out there that'd be like, be that wouldn't work. Hmm. Okay. Because the universe will know you're lying. Can you well, change your birthday? None of us are one of so. those people. No, Legally, I don't think. Like um, you can change your name. Can you change your birthday? I don't think so. Same year, but if I'm like, I would prefer my birthday. You mean if you're March. a leap day baby? Yeah, why not? Well, they would say that your birthday comes around every four years. But that's not so true. So when you were 16 years old and you're getting your license, 
you'd be four years old, That's according I mean. to the calendar. So, like, can I just choose a different birthday? And they'd say, I'm sorry, you can't drive. You're only four. Exactly. Go, no, I'm 16. Look at me. Clearly, I'm a 16-year-old girl. Clearly. Mm-hmm. But they'd say, no, you can't do that. <laughs> where is where is she? No, <laughs> Is he looking for Priscilla, or is he doing something else? Who knows what he's doing? He's pressing buttons. Mm -hmm. It's all lighting up like a Simon says. That's what I do, guys. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm on, I'm, I was a leap year baby. Mm Mm-hmm. I was born on, um, February 12th. I was born on February 31st. So my birthday comes around every 290 years. You're old. I've been told I won't live that long. So I'm technically only about nine months old. Nice. What do you do to celebrate your 293rd birthday? I go get a Brazilian wax. Mm. Every year on February 31st? <laughs> no, every month. Oh. Yeah, just so I can stay smooth. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> ah, boy. <clears throat> Sometimes it goes nowhere fast. It's okay. Hey, Bill... Hey, Al. I uh, hate the show. Thank you, sir. I have a great, uh, I have a great idea for you to go watch at least half the game tomorrow. Oh, I, lo- I love great ideas. Yes. Okay, here we go. Going to get a cutout cardboard profile of you, put yep. it in your seat where you're sitting right now. Yeah. Then me, me and you will meet at the corner bar, 15 bucks a seat, and yep. you, get, you get a free, free beer, okay? Yeah. Then... When the show actually kicks on, we'll have Bill and Mary impersonate you. Or if and no one will know, you know, no, and, the management won't know. Or bring a remote control microphone, <laughs> and then you can act. You can act like you're in the studio yeah. on location. On location. Like, yeah. Say, man, there must be something wrong with this. Getting a lot of background noise. It'll be the game. It'll be great. Strangely enough, the only part of the, the only part of this that I can actually pull off is the cardboard cutout of me uh, that's sitting in yeah. my garage that they had over at Progressive Field during the COVID times. I'll dig that back. Like up. all my, <laughs> like all my great ideas, uh, they're never great when you go to actually do them. But hey, yeah, I think that would be great. Long, we call right that long. Uh, we call that long on setup, <laughs> short on delivery, Bill. Well. And the worst part is I can't sit next to you because I'm a lifelong Cleveland fan, so we could sit two seats apart. No, come on. We could sit next to each other. My wife's a Tigers fan. We sit there, and my daughter my daughter is probably going to be a Cleveland sports fan. She's from here. Okay. So it would be me, your daughter, extra seat, extra seat, you, extra seat, extra seat, your wife. So no no one thinks that you and I are boyfriends, Bill. Hey, it's 2022. What's That's wrong with right. That's right. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate any and all good ideas. Sports. Thank you, pal. Sports. No, listen, when I go to uh, the one time, one Browns game I'll usually get to is when the Bears are in town. Last year, uh, I went with our friend James Burge. And, of course, he's decked out on Browns gear. I've got my Bears cap on and my Devin Hester jersey when I can find it. And everybody has a good time. Hey, James. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's going on? Not much. Uh, I was just listening to you guys' conversation about how you determine one's birthday if you are born on a leap year. Uh, I was not born on a leap year, but my wife and I are expecting a little one in early March, and that's one of the first things that crossed her mind when we were given a due date was, if it comes early, please don't land on February 29th. Next year's not a leap year, as you guys clarified. But um, I was thinking about it. Uh, I think I figured out how you could determine when exactly your birthday is. So the calendar year is based on the Earth's position uh, in relation to the sun and its orbit. So if you had uh, a woman giving birth, you could have somebody standing outside with a sextant, which is an instrument to take star <laughs> locations. That's how you, you got in that trouble in the first place. Birthday. Right. Yeah, so you could actually base your birthday on the position of the stars, not the calendar day. Science. Hmm. All right, well, listen, that's something. Just have your wife hold it in. So that you make sure that she doesn't uh, have any problems no, I'll, I'll around. Have to, I'll, I'll, I'll have to outsource the sextant reading because I have been requested to be present for that. So Okay, <laughs> gotcha. All right, well, listen, that's uh, valuable information. Thank you, James. What were you saying, Bill? 
I was saying nothing. I, oh, I, I thought I was, that, yeah, I was not. Yeah, I, did not like, I don't something. think I had anything yeah. to say. I thought you were starting to no. say something. Hey, listen, before I move on from Cleveland sports, um, of course, I did want to wish um, uh, everyone's favorite, favorite local athlete, Deshaun Watson, a very happy 27th birthday. Fellow Virgo. Uh, <laughs> hey. I know they wake him up. We going up, woo woo. I know uh, the local uh, massage therapist community is uh, laser focused on that. But condolences to the family of Zadrunas Elgaskas, whose wife passed away at 50 years old. Yes, Zadrunas Elgaskas, who, of course, spent the bulk of his career with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He basically did like a year with the Heat, but he was a big, big deal. He played for the Cavs when he had hair. And uh, his wife, Jennifer, died. She was a very uh, prominent businesswoman. I think they still live in Lakewood. I don't know if he's still with the Cavs' front office. Is he? I I, I mean... uh, I I don't know that he is. I haven't... But I think he might work with the big guys on post stuff, but... uh, I think I don't think he's with officially with the organization. Jennifer Ogaskis uh, passed away on Sunday. She was only 50. They didn't release a cause of death, but I was hearing from people who had seen Z and his wife over at the Cleveland Clinic um, in the cancer area, I think. So I don't know if that's uh, how she passed away. But they had been married for a long, long time. They had a couple of adopted kids from his native Lithuania. And um, she was... Uh, she was like a big deal business owner. She had some, um, couple of companies. Yeah. I think he's in his late forties, and um, uh, the funeral is going to be this Saturday. So maybe if you're a Cavaliers fan, um, maybe send flowers. I don't know. Of course, they retired number eleven almost a decade ago. If you were there for uh, the big uh, Z jersey retirement, he was big number eleven. Um, at the what was then the Quicken Loans Arena. And I don't think that he has released a public statement, but I saw it on TMZ. He was an advisor with the Cavs, and now he helps out with the St. Ignatius basketball team. Okay. So that's what he's doing. Hmm. So that, there you go. Oh, that's It's that's very sad. sad. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That's still very young. Cancer, it's dude. younger than me. If that's what it is. Again, it's it's it could be speculation, a speculation and hearsay from uh, listeners who were hitting me up and uh, – telling me alan i'm a longtime listener and priscilla is creepy af I, I don't know what to tell you about priscilla she started calling in all of a sudden yesterday i think yesterday two days ago monday a few days monday monday. monday and she just keeps calling even when the phone aren't working <laughs> she's here mm-hmm. ready to go there you go alan leap year is the same as presidential election years i call those leap off a building year am i right Am I right? No. Leap off a building year, am it's I right? Randy. 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 Hey, Dan. What's up, man? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, uh, got a question. If you guys, I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, everyone seems to be talking about a purge law that's going into place in Illinois January 1st. I wonder if you have any opinions on that. Purge law? What do you mean? The, the cash bail? <laughs> No, it does sound crazy. Uh, apparently, they're just letting murderers out, like uh, violent sex offenders, stuff like that. Basically, if you, it, it, it's all over the news. That's all they're talking about. Starting January first, they're going to let out like four hundred violent criminals. And well, I, no, I they're they're trying crazy. to. There, there are a lot of there are a lot of cities that are trying to end cash bail. There's, you can't keep people in prison just because they don't have money. So it's it's not right, an act. Yeah, it's not an actual purge. I'm sure that's what people who don't like it are calling it because it sounds well, cool. I it's a good idea. I mean, letting people out of jail. But um, yeah, I just want to know your opinion, man. I know you guys are well, but it doesn't. But judges, but judges can still keep people in jail if they're considered a threat to the community. I mean, the the law gets rid of cash bail, but obviously a judge can go. I'm not letting you out. They they don't just go. Oh well. Look at this, and then all the doors fly open, and everybody runs out. I mean, I yeah, think no, Jan- January first, they're letting out four hundred people. Well, they're probably letting out four hundred people that they don't think pose a threat to the community, or are too expensive to keep, or are too expensive <laughs> to keep. Right? I mean, if somebody's a flight risk, obviously they're going to keep them there, and they're going to, you know, um, they still have, they're still um, 
discretion on the part of judges and things like that. Because there's yeah, yeah, these are true. these are the kind of things that people like to use in like election years to um, to Whoa, pump out a lot a minute, of though. misinformation, and they're like, well, th- there's going to be a lot of things that you can't put people in jail for anymore, like you can't put people in jail for arson, and, th- and none of that's true. Okay, but this says that there's 12 offenses that you can commit and then be released before trial. They that's are, true of any. Mary, that's true. Of it, but that's true. Wait, if you can, can I list? Go these? ahead. Go ahead. Aggravated battery, aggravated DUI, that's aggravated if you fleeing, post bail. Hold on. Burglary, arson, drug-induced homicide. If you post bail, which is kidnapping, which is no different than now. Second-degree murder. Unless it's a capital uh, offense. Uh, uh, Second-degree murder. If they give you, you guys know how the courts you guys know work how now. Bail works. You know how I bail understand. works. That's why they're trying to eliminate cash bail for people who are not being charged with capital offenses. If you don't, well, there, if you're if you're a murderer, murder, they don't give you bail. Like, if someone trespasses on your property and lights your house on fire, they will not stay in jail. That's no, not. No, that, that's, no, that's not, not true. true. That's not what that, they're that talking about. No, that, no, that's they're not. The no, I'm telling you guys. I'm no. telling you. It's, the judge can said. still hold people in. They have the judge. Yeah, yeah he could. They, yes. they could hold people, but they're not going. It, it's going to be in Illinois, especially in Chicago, where Dan, it's already a super Dan, violent city. D- d- and for people are going to be running around. Go to the no- go to the Northwestern University Law Center website, and they will spell it out. Don't get the information from Breitbart Bart, or Fox News or Infowars. Because that's I just, not. I just read it off. You literally just Google it, and it has all the information that. You yeah, go to have. Northwestern University's Law Center website and it will like it's called the it's 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 not called the it's not called the purge law it's called the pre-trial pre-trial fairness act and that means that people who have been not convicted of anything by the way the problem is that people who have not been convicted rot in jail because they can't afford their bail they're not talking about capital offenses they're talking about people who just can't afford bail if you murdered eight people, exactly. if you murdered so, so eight people, be, they're not going to give you bail in the first place. Yeah, I know. I understand where you're coming from. But also, at the same respect, there's going to be a lot of poor people committing crimes that they just don't have enough money and they're going to be let out. That's 100 percent what's happening. I don't understand how you, that can't, might happen. you, you can't realize because that, that happens now. Uh, well, this doesn't change that. Okay, so let me understand What it understand changes this is that people. Uh, I got to move on, Dan. Thank you. I'm boring everyone. Okay, thanks. Oh, you don't want to talk about this anymore. I mean, go ahead. Well, what I was going to ask. So I like Googled. Is there bail for second degree murder? And it says it's usually around two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, this is one of those uh, offenses that they're saying you'll be released before trial. But that's if someone posts two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, you got to come up with ten percent. They got to post twenty five grand. So if they have that money. And they kill someone, they can leave jail. Right. Yeah. But to Dan's point, if a poor person commits a crime, you think they're going to scrounge up twenty five thousand dollars? But it's exceedingly unlikely w- that that happens. Right. And but pro- it what, what could. It could, but that's still rare. The vast preponderance of the cases they're talking about are people who are in there for nonviolent offenses. They're not talking All of capital. These are violent. Right. But well, those people usually aren't given bail in the first place. Listen, so you're saying that someone wouldn't be given bail no for one's, burglary, but they would be given bail for second-degree murder? What I'm saying is that this isn't a perfect situation. They're tr- uh, and Illinois is not the only state doing this. A lot of states are trying to get rid of cash bail, which means people shouldn't be able to sit in prison. you got people in every state who are in jail for three years, haven't been convicted, haven't been sentenced. They just don't have the money for bail. So they're like, why am I in here? I mean, it, I know that this country doesn't care about due process anymore, but that's part of your 14th Amendment rights. So is this p- supposed to speed up the process? This is supposed to not keep nonviolent offenders in jail because they don't have $25,000. I understand that, but does it also push for if these people are back out, even though they're waiting on a trial, do you think that'll be more incentive to have these trials quicker? I, I don't know. I mean, you're constitutionally— Instead of just, they're like, oh, they're in jail anyway. You're constitutionally supposed to be afforded a speedy trial. I right. don't know what that has to do with, with this. Well, I'm saying but if when, they're like, oh, they're in jail anyway, we can take three years to get to their trial because they're not going anywhere, so it doesn't matter. They're not supposed to do that. No, these are people who have not even, in a lot of cases, people who haven't even been charged with hmm. something 
or they've been charged, but it's not, you know. But the uh, trial's still pending. There's, yeah. It's... So they're, they're just trying to, it's, it's just a big loophole that they're trying to close. So it, it, it in no way is like, well, I guess we got to let all these murderers out. I mean, people who are running for office against things like uh, getting rid of cash bail will run on that. Here's they're going to just let murderers out. No, they're still looking at rigorous detention hearings in front of a judge Here's a to simple, determine if somebody should be detained before they go through the process. Here's a simple sentence that explains it all. Viral TikToks and other social media posts are wrong about an Illinois law eliminating, <laughs> eliminating cash bail. Judges will still be able to detain people who pose a threat to the community or are a flight risk. Yes. So right. anyone that they a judge deems is dangerous to the community or a flight risk will stay in jail. And by the way, legally, flight risk is a very broadly applied definition. Flight risk is in somebody who's like, they got a private jet, they can go to Spain, right? Flight risk legally just means anybody who's trying to get out of being put in jail through, you know, anybody who is trying to uh, get away from being prosecuted for what they're being charged with. Anyway, um, it's very boring, It's uh, but it's not that complicated. Really. Hey, Alan, uh, yeah. I was wondering, is indecent exposure on that list of 12 things? Not uh. that I saw. <laughs> But pull it out. Uh, are you are right, you calling? Yeah, are you calling me from Illinois? Is that probably calling us from right in front of our window? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna make a trip out to Illinois soon. Bummed out about that. It's understandable. Okay, hey, thanks. Uh, I've got to take a break here. If you want to text three five one nine two, AlanCockShow dot com is where you will watch, and you can listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on one hundred point seven WMMS. This is NFL quarterback Rodney Pete, and here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network. Presented by Macy's Backstage. Bro. 